you've ever fired a suppressor for the first time and it wasn't movie quiet and you were so disappointed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Like and comment. The comment section is out of control. Ladies and gentlemen, quick aside right now. Um, I had an old airborne injury about four years ago. It is currently flared up to um, a pretty... A debilitating level as of the last couple of days. I've been in and out of the yard to get it taken care of. They're slowly identifying what's causing it, but uh, it has to do with my neck, like you guys know if you've been watching the channel for a while. So unfortunately, that does affect the way I'm able to move my arm, the way that I'm able to speak, uh, move my face, uh, pronounce certain words. So understand that if I'm struggling a little bit today, that uh, it's due to that. So I hope that you guys can bear with me. I am hopeful for the future and that everything will be taken care of. So this isn't a sob story, anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, dealing with a little bit more than, than usual right now. But in any case, I want to give a big shout out right now to the biggest supporter that we've had of the channel for a long time. That is Big Daddy Unlimited. So Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for the first month after that price goes up. Is it worth it? Are you worth it? We have a couple other sponsors sponsors of this particular video. So those sponsors are the Dude Bag. A big thank you to them. Like a subscription box with great dude stuff. Discount code ONWARD for a sick ONWARD research hat, which is my new company. We're coming out with some great stuff. We, of course, have Acre Gold. Uh, if you're looking to buy into gold, they're making a solid gold 9mm bullet now. Don't know why you need it. If you want it, you can buy it from them. And, of course, the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to learn gunsmithing and that type of thing, definitely go check them out. A big thank you to the sponsors of this channel. They help everything happen. So today we're going to be talking about a very cool piece of technology and one that is a long time in coming, and that is going to be the Surefire SOCOM RC suppressor. Now, of course, nowadays the SOCOM RC2 is kind of the go-to. The RC is no longer produced. Now, that being said, they are both very close. The RC2, of course, has many improvements. That being said, um, I feel that the SOCOM series of suppressors deserve a review um, simply because it's the first suppressor I ever bought and it has, as of uh, today, about 80,000 rounds on it. So quite a lot of rounds, um, probably my longest uh, review test to date. I bought this suppressor with my poor E4 money back in 2017 and I've been using it on a variety of rifle, rifles for a variety of reviews for the last, uh, the entirety of the Grantham. Now, this suppressor was not provided for to me by Surefire. Um, I have, uh, within the last year, talked to Surefire about doing some projects with them, but understand that this review is in no way sponsored by them. There was no exchange of money, no exchange of ammunition, no exchange of suppressors. The suppressor is bought by me. Ammunition is provided for by me and by sponsors for various different rifles that the suppressor has been used with. So a big thank you to all those sponsors and everybody who helped make this happen. But without further ado, let's get into the Surefire Suppressor. So <clears throat> it is hard to do a review. Uh, SOCOM RC and RC2 are the most field tested, the most fielded of any combat suppressor perhaps to have ever been utilized ever. Perhaps there are some Russian suppressors that have been used about the same amount or perhaps more, but in terms of general usage, the Surefire is a combat-proven uh, suppressor in every single way. Now, that being said, there are good things and there are bad things about the Surefire suppressor. It is certainly not the best suppressor in every suppressor, is that it is a goddamn tank. So these suppressors will just run despite grit, dirt, no matter the amount of rounds, however leaded they may become, they will continue to run and they will uh, perform under the harshest of conditions, uh, taking the hardest hits and all that type of stuff. So kind of doing what we always do. We're gonna go a little bit of tip to butt on this particular suppressor and talk about some of the features that I think make this um, my go-to suppressor for almost every situation. So to start off with, let's talk about something the Surefire Suppressor is not that good at, and that is going to be sound suppression. Now, sound suppression with a 223-556 caliber suppressor is a bit of a, 
a hotly debated subject because no matter how much you suppress a 5.56 rifle or how big that suppressor is or how much of that gas it cools down, that 5.56 slug is traveling above the speed of sound. Because of that, you are never going to be able to suppress that noise. Because of that, um, suppressors for 5.56 rifles, 308 rifles, firing hypersonic, you know, supersonic ammunition are always going to have that supersonic cracks. You're always going to get um, a lot more noise than you want to from any of these types of suppressors. So when it comes to noise suppression for a 5.56 suppressor, it's not so much the decibel levels that I'm looking at. And to get on my soapbox a little bit, I'm always frustrated when I see suppressor reviews with you know the Surefire or any other can and they slap it on a rifle and they do a decibel test and they go, well, this suppressor is clearly better because it has a lower decibel rating, you know, anywhere from 136 to 135 or I think around the 140-ish, depending on atmospheric conditions for the Surefire suppressor. And they say it is a better suppressor due to that. The point of a suppressor on a 5.56 rifle is not specifically sound suppression. Now it is sound modulation in the way that it makes it more difficult for the person that you are shooting at to detect where you are shooting from. And that's what suppressors in the 5.56 and higher category are good at. Now the Surefire certainly excels at that. Now in other ways, the Surefire excels because the biggest thing that comes with a suppressor in the 5.56 category is going to be signature A big thing with suppressors is going to be first round pop. That is, uh, if you haven't fired the suppressor for a while, or if it's been a while between shots, oxygen is going to get into there. And as all those hot gases get into there, you're going to get the expansion of those, the combustion of that oxygen, and you're going to have uh, a louder first shot. That is a well-known phenomenon. It's certainly more applicable in smaller caliber weapons, but it definitely applies to 5.56 and over rifles, especially if you're using a suppressor that is oversized for the caliber that you're using. Now, when it comes to first round pop, the Surefire suppressor does a really good job of attenuating that. Now, no matter what, you're still going to get a louder first shot. Now, there are ways to deal with that first round pop as well. If you're if you want to make the suppressor any quieter than you want it to be for a couple shots or something like that, you can do what's called a wet shot. And we'll go ahead and cut to this video right here so I can explain it to you. All right, guys, we're going to demonstrate a wet shot. So a wet shot is when you have some type of media or water or substance inside the suppressor that makes it a lot quieter. Now, right here, the suppressor is dry. So we're going to go ahead and test out the sound level when it's dry. And it sits at around 140. So that is our dry suppressor. So what we have right here is we have Tyler, our resident Marine. He is gonna go ahead and pour some water into here. And again, it doesn't just have to be water. You can use, like I said before, saliva. You can use piss. Um, a lot of people use different types of thicker media to help dampen the shot. So you have a lot of options in the field, but we're gonna go ahead and do our wet shot now. So as you can see, those are wet shots. They're not gonna last a long time because eventually you're gonna burn off all that water or pee or whatever you have in there. But for the first couple shots, you know, for that first round pop, it does help with that. So that is your wet shot. So as you can see, like many other suppressors, the Surefire SOCOM does a great job with wet shots. So that is certainly an option that you have, whether it be water, saliva, or any other material. Now, a lot of people tend to use some thicker material because it stays in the suppressor longer and it works longer. I tend to not like that because um, it can cause a little bit more of a mess. It can get very thick and it can, in my opinion, cause some issues. I understand some people really like using that thicker media, but I prefer sticking to water, urine or saliva or something like that if I need to attenuate a shot and make it a little bit quieter by doing a wet shot with a Surefire suppressor. So uh, when it comes to sound suppression, the Surefire SOCOM is certainly not the quietest suppressor now, with that, there's a drawback to everything and there's a plus side to everything. The plus side of not being the quietest suppressor is that it does have a reduction in blowback. 
So when you mount a suppressor to a weapon, you're going to increase the amount of pressure, specifically gas pressure in the system. That's going to be harder on the weapon because the weapon is going to uh, cycle faster, cycle harder. It's going to wear out your parts, especially on a short barreled weapon, such as this Mark 18 right here. The Surefire SOCOM suppressor was specifically designed for short barreled rifles to ensure that it had some blast baffles to somewhat um, cut down on the amount of back pressure that you're having when you're using this suppressor. Now there are suppressors that do much better, such as flow through suppressors, but those have their own problems as well. Again, it's plus and minus with everything. As far as trade-offs, I think that the Surefire SOCOM does a good trade-off between the amount of sound suppression that we get and the amount of gas blowback that we get. I find it to be very manageable and not horrific, unlike some other suppressors that I've used in the past. So certainly good there. Now, another thing is, of course, the size and weight. The larger the suppressor, the longer the suppressor, the better um, flash reduction, the better the sound reduction is going to be. But of course, everything is a balance. I do like what we have with the Surefire SOCOM, which is a 6.4 inch, which is going to be familiar to some of you, inch suppressor that weighs around 17 ounces. So there are heavier suppressors, there are lighter suppressors, but as far as a good mix of durability, and length, I find, or I believe that this particular one has around 40,000 rounds on it so far without being recorded. So of course it is getting leaded and that type of stuff. And we'll talk about ways to deal with that. But this thing has seen multiple impacts to doorways, to cars, to being shot off. Um, this suppressor has really been put through the ringer and has really taken a lot of hard impacts through the time that I've had it. And despite all of that, I've never had any significant damage to the suppressor. Um, it is a very robust, strong design. Now I've had other suppressors where I've dropped them, they've dented immediately. So there is a lot to be said about a robust, strong design when it comes to your suppressors. Now, when we talk suppressors, a big thing is going to be flash reduction. And that is one of the main reasons that I use a suppressor is to reduce the amount of flash that's coming off a rifle, especially when firing under night vision or firing at night. Uh, a flash from your rifle is going to be a simple way to give away your position. By using a suppressor, you significantly cut down on the amount of flash. Now, Surefire famously states on their website that it's like a 99.3 reduction in flash versus a bare muzzle and that's ridiculous nobody's going to be firing at the bare muzzle but compared to like a normal muzzle device even a really good one like the muzzle device from be myers or something like that uh suppressor does a very good job now On a short barreled rifle like the Mark 18, any suppressor is gonna struggle. The Surefire SOCOM does a pretty good job. You're of course gonna get that nice little jet of flame coming out the front, especially as the suppressor heats up. As the suppressor heats up, you're gonna get more flash. You're gonna get a louder shot, typically going up towards 145 decibels, but it does pretty dang good. Now on longer rifles, like a 14.5 URGI or something along those lines, you're gonna get a lot less flash and of course a quieter shot due to the length of the barrel. But in any case, I find that the Surefire Suppressor does an excellent job of reducing flash when firing, even from a short barreled rifle. And multiple people have talked about the need for a flash suppressor during engagements, most notably Kevin Owens, when he was on my channel talking about engaging somebody without a sound suppressor and they were able to easily pick him out at night due to the amount of muzzle flash off of his short barreled Mark 18. So a surefire suppressor or suppressor in general is definitely a good option. And in this case, I most certainly recommend a surefire suppressor for a short barreled rifle. The uh, SOCOM suppressors do an excellent job of attenuating that flash. Maybe not that it will specifically happen, but a, another thing that is rarely talked about when it comes to suppressors is how visible are they under night vision as they heat up? Because all suppressors are not created equal. Specifically, 
there are a multitude of cheaper suppressors that will heat up and that will glow under night vision much more readily than will the Surefire suppressor. Now, of course, you can add a suppressor cover to help mask that, but as you add the suppressor cover, you cause more internal damage to the suppressor as it heats up much more quickly. The Surefire suppressor does a great job of not showing up under night vision until it gets significantly hot compared to some where after maybe you know eight to 10 rounds, that thing is glowing white hot under night vision, which could possibly give your position away significant depending on the suppressor that you use. In the case of the Surefire suppressor, you have a very minimal shift in impact. In fact, uh, Surefire states it's about one MOA or less. They claim sub MOA. Now for me, mine's a little bit less than one inch at 100, which is sub MOA. Pretty incredible. I've had suppressors that have had as much as a six to seven, sometimes a nine MOA shift. Um, of course, that's not every suppressor. There are plenty of other suppressors out there that have a minimal shift like the Surefire, but it is another thing that is going in favor of the Surefire, is the fact that there is a very minimal shift in point of impact with a suppressor mounted. Another important thing is going to be the mount. Um, few people talk about a mount, and I've seen a lot of ridiculous claims from a lot of companies on mounts from their particular suppressors. I've heard some certain mounts will never lock up and will never carbon lock and all that kind of stuff. In my experience, from the amount of round counts that I do on various types of suppressors, I've had every single muzzle device with a suppressor on it lock up on me at some point or another. It's just a fact of having it lock up onto your weapon. The first thing is going to be cleaning the surfaces that make contact with where it locks up. In the case of the Surefire, you of course have the little locking tabs right here where it mounts into. And then of course cleaning right around the muzzle device, I use a wire brush. And then on the inside of the, the Surefire War Comp right here, you have a three prong, you have the closed tine. If you're switching from one muzzle device to another, i.e. you're switching your suppressor from one gun to another with a slightly different Surefire muzzle device, you might have some issues. It's always a good idea to keep those as clean as possible. Some people do like to put some type of anti-seize compound on their mounting surfaces. In my experience, that hasn't always been good due to the amount that I shoot, the amount that, amount that it cools and heats up. I found that it just causes more problems. Now, your mileage may vary, but understand for me, I just keep my surfaces as clean as possible. Every something that can't really be measured by decibels, the tone of the Surefire suppressor is very pleasant. It's kind of a deep kind of a baritone type tone. I'm kind of waxing a little poetic here. In any case, Surefire does claim a 134 decibel at the ear or 133, somewhere right around there. I probably just got carbon on my cheek. This uh, gun is super dirty, but it sounds really good when fired. And on top of that, you have not too much gas blow back to the face. And again, here I am using one of BCM's new charging handles, which has worked very well in keeping gas blow back to a minimum. The Surefire suppressor does very well, so long as you're using a barrel that is gassed properly. Firing at the Surefire suppressor is an absolute dream. I find with a suppressor, I'm more accurate, and that's mostly due to the fact that there's less flash and bang, and it's just easier to keep the weapon where I need it to be because there's less going on. And on top of that, you also have more weight out front, which helps mitigate a lot of the recoil and the rise that you'd see from your rifle. So firing with a suppressor is a very pleasurable thing. Now, of course, with a suppressor on there, you do have that added weight, so it can become more tiring to hold it for long periods of time. Now, another thing to talk about with suppressors is reliability. The Surefire suppressor is, in my opinion, perhaps one of the most reliable suppressors along with the Knight's Armament suppressor in every single way. It has never caused a malfunction for me, and it has been utterly reliable in every single way. It is simply one of my favorite suppressors. It is a sound attenuation that I need that has excellent flash suppression, that is incredibly durable, incredibly reliable, and has a rock solid mounting surface that if it does become carbon locked, is easier to remove with a live round should I need to do it. Um, you know, to put it, to put it frankly, this is one of my favorite suppressors along with the Knight's Armament and a couple others, but I absolutely trust the Surefire suppressor. If you're thinking about getting a suppressor, you can in no way, shape or form, 
go wrong with a surefire suppressor. So get one, enjoy it, shoot it because shooting with a suppressor is awesome. Now do be aware that when you do shoot with a suppressor, you do have increased lead blowback to your face. So make sure that you take the appropriate steps of lead wipes to ensure that you're not getting any of those lead poisoning problems. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is a review I've been meaning to do for a long time. Um, 80,000 rounds on this thing. So it's been pretty incredible. Glad you can join me for this. We have way more great reviews coming. Surefire suppressors. The thing about it is as cool as a suppressor is, it's not going to make you a better shooter. Make sure that you get training. Training is what matters. Get training from some great people out there. Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, Cogworks. Can't recommend these people enough. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Um, you know, regarding everything that I have going on right now, uh, one thing that I'd like to point out is to be grateful for your health. Um, be grateful that you're not dead, that you're alive. And despite anything that you might have going on, um, there's always a ways forward. Look forward to that. Enjoy your health. Um, if you're a healthy person right now and you're not enjoying everything that your body has to offer, you're not working out, you're not enjoying the outdoors, you're not uh, experiencing everything that your body can offer you, you're severely missing out. Um, get out there, work out, do extreme sports, explore the world, because there's gonna be a point in your life when you no longer have the ability to do so due to your health, and that will be a sad day indeed. So get out there and do those things. Ladies and gentlemen, you know if you've gotten this far that we're gonna rep Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is like a repository of survival information. As a formal survival guy, I can't recommend it enough. Definitely go and check it out. It is a great repository of seer type information. Final shout out to my Patreon people. You guys have made this channel incredible and I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got nothing else for you.